Okay, so hello, we're here today with Claude Tardif. Um, Claude is from the ICRC. Hello, Claude. Thank you for having a chat with us before this course starts. Hello, how are you? Everything is okay? Good, very good, thank you. So, Claude, what I'd just like to chat to you about today is is your role within ICRC and um, just so that everyone who's doing the course can have a, a little bit more of an understanding about ICRC and how you work with amputees and physiotherapy and, and things like that. So first of all, what is your um, particular role within the ICRC? So, so my role is I'm the head of ICRC physical rehabilitation program. So my role is to oversee what we do around the world in, in physical rehabilitation. So for the ICRC, the definition of physical rehabilitation, okay, because you could have different uh, different uh, definition and sometimes people use medical rehabilitation, so, but, but we use physical rehabilitation and it's imply the provision of mobility device. Okay, So that's include prosthetic, orthotic, wheelchair and uh, walking aids along with the appropriate therapy to make sure that the people who are receiving this device okay, have the means to use the device uh, with an optimal uh, point of view. Okay, So they, for the MPT, if we're getting back to the MPT, at least they will have access, they will, before, being, before leaving the center that we support worldwide, okay, they will have access to pre-fitting physiotherapy, gait training, okay, and then yeah, so make sure that when they leave after a certain period of time, okay, there is no problem. Okay, they are they know how to walk, they know how to use it, and making sure that everything is okay because there's always a period of time okay, between because when when we start the process, let's say when you start the casting, okay, there's a manufacturing time. Okay, during that time, normally people will have access to pre-fitting pre-fitting physiotherapy. Then the device is finished, okay? but finished technically speaking. Okay, so then we do the first fitting, and then for a certain period of time, depending if it is the first time that the person receives a prosthesis or the second time or third time, okay, they will have to pass through a different step, okay, before we finishing completely the prosthesis, okay, and then they can be discharged. So during that time, they will do some gait training, some exercise. And each day they will do this uh, with the PNO professional and the physiotherapist. They will work together, and the PNO will do the final adjustment on the device to make sure that the uh, the gait is as good as we can reach. Okay, and then the physiotherapy will do its job. But it's really a teamwork. Okay, and it's really at the end of this process that we give the green lights or the discharge for the person to leave the center with this uh, device. And then at the end of the process, then the cosmetic around the prosthesis will be put on and then the person will leave. So, so we're hoping to cover all that you've just mentioned within the course. So we're hoping to cover um, the multidisciplinary team, pre-fitting, gait training, and um, all the casting and everything. So, so that's all gonna be within the course. So you mentioned the multidisciplinary team. Who and you've mentioned the P and O's and the physiotherapists. Is there anyone else on the physical and rehabilitation team? Well, it's depend a lot about the country where we work, okay? Because ideally, the teams, well, of course, there's the person who receives the service in the middle of the multidisciplinary team, okay? And then you will have the P and O professional, you will have the physiotherapist, okay? And then yeah, you could have more people around, but it's really linked to uh, the context where we work. So sometimes you will have, in some country, but very limited, okay, you will have a rehabilitation doctor or re rehabilitation physician, very specialized in rehabilitation process. Sometimes you will have orthopedic surgeon because uh, it's important sometimes because if it is the first fitting or first amputation, then, yeah, so we have link. You may have a social worker also you know, to interact with the environment in which the MPT will continue to function. You may have the family, if it is a child, okay, to went down. Then you could have occupational therapist, but occupational therapist is not, uh, uh, unfortunately, it is not uh, a profession which is well developed in many in the context where we work. So, the, so at minimum, at minimum is the person, the PNO professional, and the physiotherapist. And then, depending who are the other professionals around, okay, 
and then we can add other people. But multidisciplinary team approach means that right from the beginning, from the time the person arrived, okay, the assessment is done in common, okay? And then from this, each of them will put some input into the, the what we can call the, the, the treatment protocol or the treatment plan, okay? And which of, of course, at the end, the, the, the final aim should be the same, okay? But the specific aim, each of the, either the profession have a specific aims to achieve, okay? So if you look at from the moment the person arrives at the center, so common assessment, and then the person may go in two different pathways, okay? One is linked to, uh, uh, to have the, the device produced and fit on, on him. And on the other side, you will have the therapy side. Okay, or, or the medical care if you need some care on the stump or whatever. But then there will be a point where these two roads will get back together again. Okay, and then there will be a certain parallel where the, the two, where the team will work together until the end of the process when the people are discharged and making sure that on both sides we are happy with the outcome or, or, or what we have at the moment before we leave the center. And so the multidisciplinary teams, they work together within your physical and rehabilitation centres, your ICRC centres. Um, how many countries... ICRC supported centres, okay, because, because we, we work, in 2005, we work in 32 countries, okay, the, the physical rehabilitation programme, okay. Among, and we support 125, 26 projects, okay. What we mean by project is... The vast majority of this, okay, of this 126 projects are physical rehabilitation center. Okay, I think among the 125, we talk about 117 physical rehabilitation center. Okay, among this total number of physical rehabilitation center, only eight are ICIC managed center. All the other could be either managed by governmental uh, structure, Minister of Health, Ministry of Social Affairs, depending which ministry is responsible. Okay. Local NGO, private enterprise, uh, Red Cross, Red Crescent Society. So we work very much in the support uh, approach where we do, the aim of the, our, our assistance is linked to developing the national capacity. So in one day, they should be able to provide by themselves the services. So that, that that's applied to a vast range of services. So there's a professional knowledge, the technical knowledge, the clinical knowledge, the managerial knowledge. So there's many, many issues. Okay. Okay. So that's why we, we use more ICRC assisted uh, project or center than ICRC center. I didn't realize that, but I understand now it's good to know. Um, so I, in your ICRC, supported centres. I assume that um, sort of workforce training for the um, local workforce is really important as well. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah it's one of the main pillars because uh, we realise over the years, if you don't have the appropriate human resources, okay, professionals speak, professionally speaking, then we can always bring a lot of uh, expatriate. But the role, if you look, if you look at in, over the time, we, we see now that the uh, the role of ICRC specialists that we send in all the country have changed quite a lot, okay? At the beginning, 35, 36 years ago, they were providing services, okay? Now we are more there as a professional backup, okay? We are supporting, mentoring, short-time training, okay? It's on-the-job training, uh, clinical yeah, we, we are there to stimulate the discussion and support and to provide clinical and technical backup, okay? But to be able to do that, okay, you need to have a workforce in place. So, so we, we, we do spend a lot of resources, financial resources, time resources, to develop this capacity. So we, there's different pathway, okay? So either we, we provide scholarship, candidate to attend training most of the time outside of their country because uh, very often there's a limited number of schools uh, in countries okay so we send them abroad to be trained three four years depending on the level okay then they come back and then we when they come back uh, since they don't have too much experience then we will have a team uh, expatriate team ICRC specialist to 
accompanying them over the time they gain experience. Okay? And then they, they learn and more and learn and more. We can also, apart from the scholarship, we can also conduct direct training. We have developed training package, okay? mainly for prosthetics or prosthetics uh, professional, okay? which have been recognized by the International Society for Prosthetics and Orthotics. And so we do conduct this training. We conducted ICSC, but in collaboration with national institutions. So the diploma is not issued by ICIC, but is issued by Ministry of Education or university or whatever uh, training institution we work. And another part is really to, 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 let's say, for physiotherapy, for example, like in Colombia or in Ethiopia, we work a lot with school who train physiotherapists to include models, specific models, okay, on the management of either MPT or this or this, because in most of the training program we realize for physiotherapists, okay, they have uh, they are more trained to work in hospital setting okay, yeah. than to work in a rehabilitation setting where the work is a bit different. Okay, uh, so so we develop modules either to be included in the normal curriculum, okay, or we work with the school to receive their student in clinical placement in center. Then we work with them. Okay, so we get that. So this this is very. Uh, I will say that all my colleagues in the field are somewhere doing training at different levels, but okay, okay, different levels. Sometimes it's less formal, sometimes it's very formal, okay, but we, it is an, a very an important element, okay, and part of our work. Okay, we spend a lot of time in training because without this, yeah, it's, because if you look at the difference between physiotherapists and PO professional, okay, in most of the country where we work, there's a school of physiotherapy. The weakness is more to include rehabilitation into their curriculum, okay? While for the PNO in most of the country where we work, there is no school, okay? So there's much more candidates send abroad to be trained for PNO. While for physiotherapists, we are working much more to try to include rehabilitation in a normal school curriculum. So, so with this course that we're running now, we're hoping that we can deliver sort of a basic groundwork of the theory behind amputee rehabilitation. And we're hoping with it being an open online course that it can reach a wide number of people and you can use it to get a good um, ground level of knowledge for your workforce and for the people that you're training in your physical rehabilitation centers. And we're hoping that that will pave the way for more time for practical training with them as well. Um, so, so yes, yeah, we all because of course we're gonna we're gonna promote this course within our own network of center. Okay, uh, MPT is one field. Okay, well, personally, I hope also there's other area that can be open. Okay, because now you see there, there's a lot of change. You know, because MPT. If I look at the workload that uh, all the, the, the center where we work worldwide, okay, if I look at device only, okay, you each year it's about 20, 22,000 prosthesis which are delivered, okay, within the network of our assisted center. Autotic, autotic, we talk about 74,000, okay. So the need for autotic is much more greater, okay. And, and the management of all these persons are differently than amputees. Amputee, I don't say it's not important. I'm just saying that, well, I think there is space also for other area. And knowing that there's a lot of, um, there's an increase in non-communicable non -communicable disease around the world, okay, diabetes, cerebral palsy, uh, spinal cord injury, which are much more complicated in terms of management, okay. And I think that's uh, one of, uh, in our case, this is one of the challenges that we have realized. And it's one of, is that priority area that we have decided also to work to develop more standard and more uh, approach in, to, to the management in this type of case. Okay. But, but nevertheless, this type of course is good because it's also, for us, it's also sharing our vast experience <laughs> in, in, in managing a, uh, people with amputation worldwide and different type of context and different type of situation, okay? Uh, and also, we, we could imagine also the exchange that will be done through this online package of online courses. We could also learn from others, okay, that uh, 
we we don't think that we have the truth over our head, okay? But I think it's a, I think it's always good this because now this new communication are a little much more professional discussion, okay? This forum and all the stuff, and that can stimulate a lot of discussion, okay? And then uh, some things that I've, I've done in some of developing country could be very useful to others, okay? And things were maybe done, and also in what call, what we call developed countries, okay, could also be adapted to the situation in the context where we work. So this professional exchange would be good to see how this, the people interact with each other through the forum and through the, the, the communication and that would be done within the online courses. And, and, course, and, and I think that will stimulate discussion and hopefully we can reach something that can uh, improve the quality of the services provided, both from the piano side and both from the physiotherapist side and maybe either of on the overall management of people with amputation worldwide. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really, we're really grateful that you're sharing all the expertise that you have with us to, to build this course. Um, that's really great. And I totally agree with you. The discussion forums are a place where, you know, your um, workforce and the people who signed up as moderators can lead the discussions and will lead the discussion points with our questioning. But definitely everyone in there can have a professional discussion and the discussion goes both ways. We can learn, you know, the so developed countries can learn from the less developed yeah. countries as, as the other way around. And I think uh, the, the discussion forums are a really important part of the course and we totally encourage yeah. people to have conversations in there and learn from each other. Um, that's that's an important part of the learning. So we hope to see that going on. Yeah, hopefully, I, I know, I don't know. You see, because there's there's quite a big gaps between you know. If I look at technology speaking, okay, what you could have access to in a, in a, in a developed country like in Europe or in America, okay. But the technology itself is not a big is not a big. It's not because you have a more expensive technology, okay, that necessarily the, the, the care that you give it is better quality, okay. And I think this is an important issue here, okay. Of course, they, they have new technology that can help a lot of people who are very active, okay, because you know, the light and energy return and all this stuff, but people should understand also that it's more the professional approach. For the piano professional, it will be the alignment, the fitting of the socket and all this stuff. For the physiotherapy is the same. It's not all the all the, the electronic uh, machine you may have around. It's more people understanding what they are doing, okay, and pro and providing not standard care for everybody, but more to be able from the assessment to identify exactly what is the need, okay, and then from this to uh, to propose a, a plan of action or treatment plan depending on how you see it, okay that will answer specifically the needs of these people. So people have a tendency to think that, ah, I have a prosthesis that got, uh, that costs 50,000 US dollars. Yeah, but if the fitting is not good, if the alignment is not good, then it's remain a not good prosthesis, <laughs> okay? So, <laughs> and I, I think that, no, and this is something we, we have discussed a lot with professionals around the world. And in some contexts, if it's expensive, it's have to be good. It's not necessarily, it's how professional we are managing the case, if I can say. Our understanding that whatever we develop as a solution for this particular person is really addressing the need of this person. Okay? Yeah. And it's not because gate training is, in, is important, but the gate training goal will be a bit different from one person to another. Okay? The overall game is the same, uh, goal is the same, but for this person, if it is somebody who has been using a prosthesis for 10 years, it's different than somebody who uses it for the first time. Okay, so you, all this needs to be adapted, and then people need to understand this. It's more the way you think, the way you adapt your treatment uh, according to the person needed, but also according to the, uh, the result you achieve in the process. Okay? Because, uh, what is important is at the end, the person is able to walk properly with his prosthesis and to do what they want to do in a normal life. Yeah, and I think with this course, we're trying what we're, we're trying to do exactly that: cover the basic concepts and the basic knowledge, so that everyone is then able to use that knowledge and yeah. take it on to provide individualized and personalized care for their patients in in their 
their situation. So, so the courses will cover that and hopefully will be very useful to everybody. No, but I'm sure I'm sure it will be useful. I think it, it will be nice to see the dynamic, okay, because that, 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 the exchange within the forum that is inside the online courses and uh, the discussion with the moderator and people input into it. Because this is because you know um, in most of the training, or at, when I was trained as a professional, okay, we were trained as an exchange okay, where uh, you have the the the. the Lecturer in front of you will give you something, but it's a professional exchange. Okay, so you need to exchange because you may not always you can because you may see the same person, and I will see a solution, and my colleagues can see another solution, and then it's more professional discussion, and then yeah, it's a bit different. Okay, and I think this is important to be able to develop the capacity of uh, I will say clinical talking. Okay clinical thinking and talking, to be able to discuss within professional, okay, and and to, to yeah, sometimes to challenge the, the approach of the other one, not saying that oh, this is this is not good, no, why, okay, why do you do this, oh, okay, I never talk about this, but you see, this way of thinking uh, is very important, this, uh, we'll see the clinical reasoning, if I say, behind, okay, being able to explain why you're doing this, okay, and understanding why you're doing it, and being able to be open to suggestion from other colleagues, okay? And this is very important. And, yeah. and I think this is the way you learn. Okay. Absolutely. They're the, they're the sorts of discussions that we encourage in the discussion forums so that everyone can learn from each other. So, well, thank you very much. I think you've given some really good advice and tips there for people on the course. And it's really nice to learn more about the ICRC and how you work. Um, and how you work with amputees and your physical rehabilitation centres. So. Thank you. We look forward to the course and um, we'll keep you informed with how it goes. Yeah. So thank you and uh, uh, good luck in running the, the, the course. And also I hope that the participants in the course will also enjoy what's have been done, what's working ICIC with Physiopedia and others to put the course together. I think people will find it uh, not only interesting but valuable in terms of contents. And I hope, and I hope that the discussion within the online space for forum or forum, okay, will also bring a lot of discussion and sometimes confronting ideas. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. It's great to speak to you today, Claude. Thank you.